Hey folks, uh, in this video we're going to calculate the inductance of a coax cable um, and then also at the end of the video we'll talk about multiple uh, inductors if they're in series or parallel, how do you combine them. So imagine a coax cable that looks like this um, and I'll, I'll try to draw the best I can. So it's got an inner wire and then it's got an outer sheath like so. So here is the inner wire going off and then here is the outer sheath going off. So they're concentric cylinders, like so. And let's say you have a current uh, coming out of the page. Uh, we'll call that I, okay? And then uh, we'll give these radii. We'll call this A, and we'll call this outer radius B. And we want to know the inductance of this coax cable system, okay? So let's start with the equation for inductance. This L is equal to N times magnetic flux over I, okay? Now, N is one, there's, there's, not, there's only one turn, okay? Um, there's not multiple cables here. Uh, so the hard part in this problem is, is calculating magnetic flux. So the equation for magnetic flux from a while ago is uh, double integral B dot DA, okay? Um, now, uh, what's the magnetic field look like? Well, for the inner wire, the current's coming out the page at you. If you point your thumb out the page, your fingers curl counterclockwise. So we have a magnetic field going like this counterclockwise around that inner wire. That magnetic field strength is simply that for a wire, which is mu naught i over 2 pi r. So that's B in this equation. Uh, what, what area are we talking about? Well, what we're talking about is an area of a rectangle that would go from the inner to the outer radius and extend all the way through your coax cable. Okay, so um, that cable has a that, that cable must has to have a length l. Okay, so it's got to be finite. All right, uh, we know that the inner the distance to the center of this thing to here is A, and then to here is B. So the, the width of the rectangle is, you know, B minus A. So that's, that's the rectangle through which these magnetic field lines are, are passing through. That's your area, okay? DA, well, you got two choices. You could do rectangles like that or rectangles like that. And we're going to do the latter because we want a rectangle through which the magnetic field is the same strength everywhere in that DA. Okay, so our DA is going to be this rectangle. That's going to be your DA. The dimensions of that rectangle actually goes off through the length of the cable. The dimensions of that DA are L, and then the, the, the height of it is DR. Okay, that's another way to know that we're going to use that. We want to use something that has R as a variable because that's going to be our variable. So DA is going to be L DR. Okay, so then we've pretty much got all this, right? The flux is the, now we only have to integrate once now because the, the magnetic field along L is going to be constant. It's just along R that it varies. So B is mu naught I over 2 pi R and DA is L dr. Oh, and we don't have to worry about the dot product because the magnetic field is always perpendicular to this area or parallel to the area vector at all points along that rectangle. So we picked, a, we picked an area that we don't have to worry about a dot product. We don't have to worry about an angle. Um, and we're integrating R from A to B. Okay, so the magnetic flux, this is the hard part. The magnetic flux, okay, so constants are mu naught I L over 2 pi. And what are we really integrating? D, dr over R, which is natural log of R, evaluated from A to B. So our flux is mu naught I L over two pi natural log of B divided by A. So that's, our, that's the hard part, that's the flux, okay? Uh, now L, so we're using this equation here for L, okay? Uh, that's the easy part. Uh, L is equal to N, which is, I'll call it N, but it's one. The flux we just calculated, which is all this crazy stuff, mu naught I L over two pi natural log of B over A divided by I, okay? As always, I, the current, should cancel out, okay? Your inductance shouldn't depend on how much current you have flowing. So you end up with L equals N, which is one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore that from here on in. 
uh, mu naught L over 2 pi natural log of B over A. So that is the inductance of that solenoid. That's, that's how strongly the solenoid resists changes in current. Of course, uh, companies that send signals through inductors have, or in through coax cables have to worry about this inductance um, because that will, this will resist changes in current. And of course, signals are changes in current. <laughs> so you have to actually worry about this. Now, the last thing I promised you was uh, we're going to briefly talk about series and parallel. And for that, it's just adding inductors is the same as adding resistors. So if you have a series inductors, if you have multiple inductors in series, so, you know, like this and so on, okay, the sum of the L's is simply you just add them up. So L1 plus L2 plus L3, dot, dot, dot. All right, so just like adding resistors, and same thing with parallel. If you have inductors in parallel, okay, the 1 over the sum of the inductors is 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So that's how you combine series and parallel inductors, exactly the same as resistors and opposite of capacitors. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's something else to remember, too. It gets a little confusing. Resistors and, and inductors add the same way. Capacitors are the opposite. All right. Um, I hope that video was helpful and see you on the next one.